on the front porch homeschooling the kids. Daniel is down for a nap. He now takes naps down, which is amazing. And I'm gonna get started on today's project. Today we are going to start on a room makeover for the girls' and boys' rooms. This is something I've been thinking about doing for quite a while, it just hasn't felt like the right time, but I came across a few items on Facebook Marketplace that made it really be the right time. So a couple of beds for the boys' room, and then the girls, I had already had a wire bed that I found at Goodwill about a year ago in the garage, and then I found another wire bed that was red. So we spray painted that white. They don't match, but they're both going to be white so that they match in that way. And it's just time to get started on all of that. So first I need to go in my kids' rooms and organize and move things around. These are rooms that I've never put any focus or effort into since we've lived here. We just took the furniture from the last house, moved it in, it hasn't really felt right. The style of the furniture, also the rooms are really big. So the girls in the last house had a day bed because we couldn't fit two beds in their room. It was just too small to even fit it to open the door. But now that we have such massive rooms, I hate that they're shoved over on one side. I'd rather have a rug and two beds. And so it's time to get started with that. This won't be a full reveal today because I actually have quite a few things on order and a few things that I'm still looking for. I have a light fixture coming. I'm still on the hunt for another um, side table. So there's a lot that still has to come together. But I told Luke that we just need to get started putting stuff in there and then I can figure out what I need the rest of the way. So we're gonna get started with that today and hopefully have four new beds upstairs by the end of today. This wool rug I found on Facebook Marketplace is the inspiration for the girls' room. I really like that it's wool, so it's really cozy. It's woven and it's really comfy, but I like the colors. At first I was going to go with a red vintage rug, but I like the subtle colors here. It has that more country vibe. And then always with any rug, I like fringe. I've decided that fringe is what I am looking for. I like vintage, but I decided that I want the colors to reflect the style I'm going for in this house, which is collected and vintage, but country. I still find that as much as I like the vintage collected, almost Victorian style, that I quickly, when I buy the wrong pieces, start heading towards like fancy Victorian because a lot of the pieces are very ornate. I love the country vibe and sometimes I go to cottagey country which doesn't look right in this particular house so I'm finding my way on it but I know the style that I like it just sometimes is hard to figure out exactly what goes with that country collected Victorian all wrapped up in one okay up in the kids room yes it is a mess my kids are messy <laughs> very messy so here is exactly why the kids needed wood beds these beds, I bought them in our last house. They were fine, they lasted for like a year or two, no problem, but then now they look like this, which is just awful. And I understand now why they were $90 beds, which I was impressed with in the beginning. And more and more I am learning that you get what you pay for. And I, I know that, but I feel like I've spent so much of my life just buying cheap things and then end up them being disposable. So my strategy now is mostly old things because they're always so much more solid. Like the bed that Luke and I have in our bedroom, it is so solid and nice. It's wood, but I searched online for wood beds. Of course, super expensive. So now I'm trying to replace anything cheap and new like this with something old and more solid. So wire beds in the girls' room, but they are like solid steel beds. Like they are so strong. And then wood here in the boys. We're even gonna put a few extra screws and make them even more solid because I can't be having this anymore. Both the boys' beds. They literally go in from the back, like tilted in because they're just so cheap. They're falling in. So I don't even know what I'm gonna do with these. I feel bad throwing them away, but I will put them on Facebook Marketplace and see if someone can want them for free to maybe you could use this as a headboard and build something in between. That would work. Now 
Now I got down to what? just right blocks and train. That's all we're keeping in here. Yeah, that makes sense. Don't have any paper or notebooks or anything like that. No. All right, we got the room mostly empty. That was my goal because I just want to see it with fresh eyes. All right, next up, Mommy's going to put in a rug pad. Let's go get some more bolts. We thought we had the right ones, but we needed some that are bigger for the back. We want to make sure this is really strong because our boys are, they're boys. So we need the room to be stronger than it's been. I'm going to have some afternoon water kefir and coffee, do a little computer work, and then I'm going to go paint on the bed. I'm going to spray paint the other beds so they match. It'll go in. It'll be pretty solid if it will. Is it tight? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm gonna have to figure out how to make a crib, or not a crib skirt, a bed skirt that goes around these steel things. Oh, there you go. Okay, Mom, the bread skirt. It needs one because otherwise you're going to see the box spring down here. I don't want that, but they don't oh, make okay. bed skirts that go around steel dealy boppers. So, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to craft one. Okay, we have discovered that this bed, since it's old, this is the kind of stuff you run into. Luke has Daniel, so he's not just crying in a room somewhere. These beds are neither twins nor full, which we didn't really realize until we were putting together this box spring and it is not wide enough. So this, they could easily go like that and whoop, make it fall through. So the only solution I can think of is to take off these steel things and then just put wood slats underneath which is gonna be frustrating because I think we're gonna have to probably take the beds apart to do that. Not fun. This is the kind of stuff you run into though with old stuff, but one thing about it is these beds are so solid. I can sit, I know this shouldn't be that impressive, but I can sit on this bar and I'm not falling down. So I really love them and I'm willing to work through their issues, but uh, this isn't gonna work. All right, so I'm out here in the rain measuring the girls' antique beds to see if they will fit the requirements and I'll have to hopefully not return the box springs we already bought. I did not order four, so I didn't order two for them and two for the boys. I just ordered two. So at this point, we might just be looking at using those for them and a different option for the boys. Well, it looks like I'll be returning them because we have the exact same problem. Evidently, beds were about 41 inches. I don't know. So I don't know if they make box springs for that or what we're going to do, but I'm gonna have to figure it out. I guess with this one, we could just put slats all the way across and then set the box spring on top of that, which is probably what we're gonna have to do. So I put the two by four vertically Yep, yep. And then connect it here and basically, I mean, put two by fours in between. Right. And that'd be like a super strong box spring. I mean, overkill. It'd be four inches high, which box springs are usually higher, but at least. Would that be right? As long as. It's got to at least come up to here. Look right for you. It might need to be two by sixes on the outside, then you could just connect in the middle two by fours at the top of it. Yeah. That would be okay. That's gonna be a project. The easiest solution. I can take it on the tables on, cut it exactly the way you get a two by six is and cut them, cut them exactly how you want. Them. I mean, they can come up above because then the mattress will sink down a little bit. Like, you don't want the mattress like buried. But how much is, because they're gonna be sitting on top of this. Yes. Wait, they're gonna be sitting on top of that frame, right? Uh huh. So then that's gonna come up so much higher. I think six inches is perfect. I think this one right here is seven, I think is what it is. But I mean, it's gonna come up six on the two by six and then seven more. 
Johanna is making my zucchini chocolate muffins, zucchini chocolate sourdough muffins from the blog. We made some yesterday. They're so good that we're going back for more. And she, she's my baker girl. So are you just cutting a bunch of two by sixes at 74 inches? Yeah. Okay. No, I still didn't put them in the oven. I will though. I'm just chasing Micah around at the moment while daddy builds the thing for the boy's bed because the box spring isn't gonna work that we bought. And Micah's cracking walnuts. Micah, what are you doing? Um, You're gonna get your toe. Those are walnuts. Oh, just no. walnuts. Hey, Micah, do you want me to cut them for you? No. I want to crack one. Hey, why don't you just not go near your body, okay? For dinner, we're doing a Mexican-y type thing with just some cooked meat. And I'm gonna do a side dish of some potatoes we pulled from the garden. And I'm just gonna skip the tortillas. We'll do chips and our raw cheese from Azure Standard and then Johanna's dessert of the zucchini muffins. Actually, she turned it into a zucchini bread, but I'll show you that recipe later. It is on my blog. I'm going to shred up a little bit of my cheese. This is the raw cheddar that I get from Azure Standard. Been loving this cheese for a while. I'll leave a link to this exact one down below, but they do ship, which I like because my drop location's like 30 minutes away and the shipping's not that expensive. It's after nine o'clock, but Luke just came in with these. So we're hoping these fit perfectly on the bed and then this will essentially just be the box spring support. Someone just told me on Instagram that they liked that my beds have the rope knobs on them. So I had to look it up because I never heard of it. But apparently this is how, I'm sure some of you already knew this and were yelling at the screen 10 minutes ago, but this is how they supported the mattress. So I guess we could have done that. Check that out. It was ropes, huh? Yeah. How'd they? They just. That looks complicated. <laughs> I but know. Probably kind of comfortable. <laughs> I never heard of that. I mean, I feel like the kids would have destroyed them, but now I'm actually thinking these beds are legit old. I was just thinking it was like an 80s bed that I thought looked. Oh. Cool. But they might actually be antique. Huh. Ten bucks. <laughs> wow. We got a fussy baby. All right, this day in the life video turned into two or more. We needed to get another coat of paint on the girls' beds. And then also I ended up picking up something for the boys' room. I'm gonna show you. I was in one of my favorite vintage stores in town the other day and I spotted this really cute bed, but it's pink. I couldn't pass it up because it was a really good deal. It's not quite a toddler size, but it's also not quite a twin. It's somewhere in between and it'll fit really perfectly when you walk in the boys room and to the right where I used to have their desk for Micah. Whenever I go to put Daniel in the crib in his room, all three boys will end up sleeping in the boys room just because our house only has uh, four bedrooms total so girls boys and then nursery and then ours of course so i'm going to show you this bed and hopefully get to working on painting it before daniel wakes up the local shop I was in sells this Dixie Bell, um, I think it's chalk paint, and she showed me a rocking chair done in this, what was it, dried sage, and it looked really pretty, so I was sold on it. I normally like wooden furniture, but since it's already painted, obviously it can't be pink, and I like painted furniture more in kids' rooms as well. All right, next I'm gonna do a coat of this clear uh, clear coat. I went with the gloss because I want this bed to be easier to clean and I know that a chalk paint has a really matte finish and so it can really scratch up easily. 
and I'm not going for a shabby chic finish. I'm just going for covered. So I'm gonna try and hopefully this will really help with that. The lady at the, the shop said that it would. We brought the bed up to Micah's room and it turned out so adorable. He actually slept in it last night. So this is day three of trying to get everything squared away in the kids' rooms. Of course, everything like this always takes so much longer than I think it's going to with the girls' room and the boys' room. They've lacked attention for a while, and so there was a lot of things I needed to move around and declutter and um, just deal with the, generally the amount of stuff that goes with having kids. So we put both boys' beds finally in the position. I added some white quilts. I cut in half the blue vintage quilt and finished off the raw edge with some bias tape on my sewing machine. Put those at the end of the bed. We brought up the jute rug from the living room. I'm planning a big makeover, completely to redo the living room. So I've been putting the different pieces from the living room other places. So I put the rug in the boys' room. We brought the armoire that the TV was in up to the girls' room so that they have more storage. I brought one of the wing back chairs into Micah's room for seating. And so all, everything in the living room is getting distributed throughout the house and I'm gonna have a blank space to work with in there, which I'm really excited about. I brought the rug that I bought off Facebook Marketplace in my last antique haul video up to the girls' room and placed their two iron beds that we spray painted white. They were both purchases from Facebook Marketplace. I also did get two white quilts for the girls' beds as well. I'm planning, there's lots of things I'm still planning to get. I want some sage-ish green, duvet covers, hopefully linen, with down inserts for the ends of their beds. I want them stacked up really nice and high at the end of their bed. I want to make some more pillow covers that coordinate. I'd like to repaint the white dresser, something, some other color. I ordered some wicker trunks to go at the end of their bed. So there's a lot more coming, but it already feels a lot better to have them in two separate beds versus the trundle shoved over on one side of the room. We only had that because in the last house we just couldn't fit two beds, but I've always loved the idea of having two beds. Whenever I get everything all put back together, I will be doing a big girls room reveal. I also wanna collect some art and mirrors and there's a few more steps to definitely do before I do the full reveal, but I hope that you enjoyed coming along with us as we did make some changes in the kids room and make them more functional. And then of course, I think more beautiful. Also, I haven't in a while came on here and talked about what's going on over on the blog and the podcast. I used to do all of my videos in conjunction with the blog post, but lately I've turned this into more lifestyle content where I do some tutorials, but for the most part, I'm just taking you through our life. But I still have all of those tutorials and recipes going up on my blog. Some of the recent posts on the blog that you might have missed are the sourdough chocolate zucchini muffins. Those are really good. We've been making them a lot lately. Um, those are really good to use up your zucchini in your garden. Sourdough strawberry cream cheese cobbler, a fermented balsamic blueberry vinaigrette. So I just wanted to remind you that if you are missing any recipes, they are over there. You go to farmasonboon.com and just scroll back through like the last 10 posts. I don't know that I've really mentioned them much over here on my YouTube channel. Also, I have been podcasting a lot. And I think I mentioned whenever I first started my podcast on here, but I am now at time of recording, which this won't come out very soon. So I'm probably even more, but at the moment there are 51 published podcast episodes. Some of the recent episodes are how to add character when you don't own an old home. I had a guest on for that one. I answered your cooking questions. I did a week in the life of a full-time blogger. I did perspective on motherhood, the guest for that. Talking about meal planning, cast iron, sourdough, homesteading, making over your home on a budget, what I'm cooking currently, what I'm gardening, um, lots of stuff. So uh, even I even talked a little bit about homeschool, working from home. So if you haven't yet checked that out, I just have been forgetting to mention it on here. And I, I wanted to make a point in this vlog to do that. So, so if you have not yet listened, you can search Simple Farmhouse Life podcast on Google, open it up in your favorite podcast player by searching Simple Farmhouse Life. And you can start listening through all of those. I am thinking about making a Simple Farmhouse Life YouTube channel and uploading all of the podcasts here as well. They won't have my face in them because I didn't record them with visual, just audio. So I'm thinking about overlaying a photo and just putting my podcast up. That's seems like another good place to put it. I hadn't thought of it originally, 
But then I got an email from somebody who said they couldn't figure out any of the podcast apps. They're really familiar with YouTube. And they were just asking why I didn't put them there. I'm like, you know what? That's, that's a good idea. So I am thinking about doing that. And hopefully by the time this goes up, I'll have done that. But it's going to be quite a job. So if I haven't, let me know in the comments below if you think that's helpful. Or if you are a listener of the podcast, if you're enjoying it. I really appreciate all the reviews. We just went over 500 reviews, which is so exciting, and I'm very thankful for that. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed this day in the life turned three days in the life as we updated our kids' room, and I updated you a little bit on the blog and the podcast. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.